Amelie, please. I need to know what you know about Madame Dupre. What? How did you know my name? I'm a detective. It's what I do. Is that right? Well, I don't like people spying on me. I'm sorry, but I don't talk to people I can't trust. Well, so much for that. I'm starting to think we've closed off all our pertinent leads for them. We should probably get back to Upton and let her know. I haven't got anyone. It's all been dead ends. I'm sorry to hear that. It seems poor Mr. Martin will have to take the blame for this after all. Unfortunately, this also means I can't get you any compensation for your work. I wouldn't feel right taking it anyway. I just wish I knew what happened. It's all right, Fordham. Sometimes even the best detectives have a bad day. For now, go home and get some rest. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Well, you see, we ask that sponsors be people who have passed on into the spirit world. Once you name your sponsor, I will attempt communication beyond the ether. When they answer, you will be judged and considered for membership. You're joking, right? Communing with the spirits is no joking matter, darling. I suggest you take it a bit more seriously if you truly want to join this club. Now, do you have a sponsor or not? I think you might be insane. I am not, but if you think I am, then perhaps the Spectre Society is not for you. Good afternoon, sir. Not the most ideal approach, Fordham. Try and be a bit more tactful next time, would you? If you keep up like this, we'll never find the flower shop burglar. Yes, I know. Seriously, you really need to improve your social skills. Perhaps the soporific withdrawal is kicking in faster than I thought. That's quite enough, Bill. No, really, I'm saying this as your friend. You really should... Maybe if you just stopped talking for more than a second, I'd be able to concentrate better. Oh, now you're blaming me? I'm not in the mood for this right now. We still have a case to solve. Fine, but don't think for a moment that we're done with this conversation. Well, I think you blew it, Miles. All your leads are closed off. Time to give up then the bad news. I'm at a loss. I can't figure out who took the child. That's two cases in a row you haven't solved. Are you sure you wouldn't like to take a break for a while? No, no, I'm fine. I'm sure I'll be able to get the next one. I just have to work harder at it. Okay, if you say so. Go home and get some rest, Fordham. I think you really need it. The Spectre Society, huh? Shouldn't be surprised to hear that name again. Are you a member? No, I'm not exactly in the good graces of Miss Maxwell. Ah, that is a pity. They have quite an extensive library documenting unusual occurrences. That'll teach you to burn your bridges. Thanks for your time, Mr. Brentwell. The pleasure is all mine. I hate to say it, Miles, but I think we may have hit a dead end on this one. Probably best to get back to Upton and let her know. I've got absolutely nothing. There's no plausible explanation for what happened to her. Hmm. If you didn't find anything, I don't have much hope that the police will. That's three in a row now that have eluded you. Fordham, won't you consider taking a break? No, Upton, I'm fine. I'm confident I'll pull out of this slump soon enough. I need to keep working. All right, if you say so. I just hope it happens soon. Well, not much else we can do here. I'll send you along another case in due time. Something tells me we've reached a dead end. You should give Mrs. Morgan the bad news. I've completed my investigation of your brother's murder, Mrs. Morgan. You have? Oh, that's such a relief to hear. Who killed him? I... I'm afraid I don't know. What? I had some leads, but I botched things. And I wasn't able to follow through. I'm sorry. Well, some detective you turned out to be. I can't understand why you are so highly recommended. She has a point. You've messed up four in a row now. That takes skill, albeit completely the wrong kind. Again, I'm truly sorry, Mrs. Morgan. Perhaps I can... No, no, that's quite enough. I don't need you to grovel. Just go away. Good day to you, Mrs. Morgan. You know, Miles, you've been coming in here a lot lately, but you've never looked quite this glum. What's going on? Patrick, you come in here night after night, pour drinks, lend an ear to your customers. It's what makes you a great barman. Thank you, Miles. I appreciate that. But are there ever times when you feel you've lost that spark? I'm not sure I follow. 
You know, that indescribable thing that makes you so good at what you do, the, the spark. Have you ever felt like it's disappeared? Suppose I have. Suppose everyone has, at one time or another. It's true. Everyone does. But tonight I feel like mine's gone out for good. Ah, oh, Miles. We all have rough patches. This is more than just a rough patch, Patrick. I think it might be time for some major life changes. I can give you the name of a correspondence course I took for bartending if you'd like. That's good of you, but I think I need more than just a new job. Pour me one last one, would you? Coming right up, Miles. But it's only a few cases you haven't solved. Don't you think you're being a bit rash? No, Upton. It's not just a few unsolved cases. I've ruined my life. Don't be ridiculous! Surely you can reconcile with Adelaide. You know you have my support. No. Even if I did, it wouldn't change the person I've become. It wouldn't be fair to her. And staying here any longer wouldn't be fair to you. But I don't understand, Miles. Why Riverview? I have some things I need to sort out. Trust me when I tell you it's for the best that you don't understand. So, that's it. You're just gonna leave it all behind and check yourself into the asylum. Honestly, I should have done it a long time ago. They're the only ones who can help me now. I'll come visit you. You won't have to be alone in there. That won't be necessary, but I do have one favor I'd like to ask of you. Name it. No matter what happens, please don't tell Adelaide. She's better off not knowing, either. Goodbye, Constance. Thank you for everything. Well, I hope you're happy. The flower shop burglar is long gone, and now you're stuck in the madhouse. Although, I still can't believe you checked yourself in here voluntarily. Who does that? You can ignore me all you want, Miles. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, well, I suppose there is a bright side to all this. You always did say you wanted to be buried in a tomb overlooking the sea. A view of the river will have to do for now. Good morning, Mr. Fordham. It's time for your treatment. Good morning, Dr. Fellows. It's good to see you. Likewise, Mr. Fordham. I have some good news for you. We'll be trying something a bit different today. Oh? Yes, it's a new modern approach. The early experimental results have been quite astounding. I have a great hope that you will benefit from it. What is it? A theroconvulsive therapy. A precisely modulated etheric current is passed through the body to stimulate the brain and counteract any negative imbalances. After just a few sessions, you'll be a new man. Now, please, come with me. Those are some rather interesting decorations. Would either of you care to explain how they got here? And once again, the jig is up. I hope you can talk your way out of this one, too. I asked Upton to get me the duplicates of the sketches. This was my doing. Even if that were the case, Upton still broke the law by aiding you. How did you find out about the copies? The Ferro duplicator makes a report of every employee who uses it, as well as what was copied. A rather useful feature for instances such as these. Wouldn't you agree? These gadgets are going to be the undoing of us all. In any case, I did some digging and discovered some intriguing information. Upton, why have you been passing on classified police information to Mr. Fordham? Because he's the best detective you ever had on the force and you know it. Is that right? Personally, I don't consider getting your partner killed the mark of a great detective. But what's done is done. Constance Upton, your employment with the New Britannia Police Department is hereby terminated. But... I should add that it's only because of your 25 years of dedicated service that I'm not pressing charges against you. But as for you, Fordham, I have enough evidence to place you under arrest for obstruction of justice and interfering with police investigations. Do you have anything to say in your defense before I take you in for questioning? I didn't want to get involved. It was Upton who started asking me to look into cases after I resigned. What? Wow, I knew you could go low. 
<laughs> I never thought you'd go that Pathetic. I don't know what convinced you to aid this charlatan, Upton, but I hope you've come to your senses. Yes, I think I have. Miles Fordham, I'm placing you under arrest. <laughs> Miles Fordham in my jail. I have to admit, I always had a feeling this day would come. Fantastic. And here I thought Riverview was the worst place we could end up. Maybe if the police ever grow a brain between them, they'll catch the justice killer and you two can be neighbors. In the meantime, you get to spend your days chatting with Giles. Lucky you. Excellent job burning all your bridges, by the way. Who needs visitors in jail? Shut up, Bill. Hey, keep quiet over there! You're interrupting my midday meditation! <sighs> Cheer up, Miles. You may be in jail for the next several years, but at least you won't be alone. Ah, uh, what happened? Where am I? You don't remember last night? Donaldson got the better of you. You've been out cold for hours. I suppose that explains the headache. Now, do you want the bad news or the worst news? Uh, just give it to me. That wasn't our saboteur, and we've lost several hours. There's no way we'll be able to find the Justice Killer in time. Time to face the music. <laughs> Miles Fordham in my jail. I have to admit, I always had a feeling this day would come. Fantastic. And here I thought Riverview was the worst place we could end up. Maybe if the police ever grow a brain between them, they'll catch the Justice Killer and you two can be neighbors. In the meantime, you get to spend your days chatting with Giles. Lucky you. Upton! Fancy seeing you here. I'm here to speak with Fordham. Be my guest. Seems you're really up the creek, Fordham. What happened? I couldn't find the Justice Killer in time. How long has Snelling got you in here? Who can say? It might be a very long while. I wish there was something I could do to help. But I don't exactly have any strings left to pull in the department. It's fine, Upton. You've helped me enough. I've made my bed. Now I have to lie in it. I'm not just gonna give up. I'll see what I can figure out. In the meantime, take care of yourself. I'll try my best. Giles? Pleasure as always, Upton. <laughs> she wants me. Poor Upton. She means well, but she won't be able to do a thing. Cheer up, Miles. You may be in jail for the next several years, but at least you won't be alone. Fantastic. And here I thought Riverview was the worst place we could end up. Maybe if the police ever grow a brain between them, they'll catch the Justice Killer and you two can be neighbors. In the meantime, you get to spend your days chatting with Giles. Lucky you. May I help you with something, young lady? Yes, I'm here to see my husband, Miles Fordham. Your husband? You really know how to pick him, Fordham. Shut your mouth, Giles. Hey, now, a little respect for your jailkeeper. Go ahead and speak to him, but don't take too long. Five minutes and then on your way. How did you get into this mess? I don't think I can tell it all in five minutes. I was trying to catch the man who caused Bill's death, and I ran out of time. How long are they going to keep you here? I don't know, but I have a feeling it might be a very long time. Well, you'd better believe I'll do all I can to get you out of here. Time's up. On your way, ma'am. Don't give up, Miles. I love you. I love you too, Addie. Poor Adelaide. She means well, but she won't be able to do a thing. Cheer up, Miles. You may be in jail for the next several years, but at least you won't be alone. Fordham, I think the pieces are all falling into place. The man we're looking for is Lily Peterson's nephew, last name Collins. We know his motive and how he chooses his victims. All we have to do now is locate him. But I think that's best left for the morning. It's getting rather late. What was that? Sounded like it came from Upton's room. What's he doing here? 
How did he find you? You... you tricked me! You... Mr. Collins, we meet again. Do I... know you? Of course. The rooftop. I'm... sorry about what happened to your partner. It wasn't my intent for him to die. Oh, he's sorry, is he? Is that supposed to make things better? I suppose this encounter was... inevitable. Damn it, Miles! Of all the times not to have a gun! How in the ether did you find me? That part was easy. I had my informants follow you and tell me where you'd gone. Of course, if I'd known you weren't sleeping in the bedroom, this would have been much easier. Informants? You'd been asking questions. Getting too close to find you. Of course, the Gilded Lily. So, I had to come here and make sure you didn't get any closer. It's nothing personal. I just can't have my work interrupted. Not yet. There remains so much to be done. What did you do with Upton? I swear, if you've hurt her... She's had a nasty blow, but she'll recover. Luckily, I realized my mistake before it was too late. You mean you're not planning on killing her too? No. Why would you even suggest that? Bit of a sore spot there, it seems. Why are you murdering people? I'm doing the world a favor. How? By bringing justice to those who deserve it. You consider shooting people in the head justice? I don't expect you to understand. All these killings. It's because of what happened to your aunt and mother, isn't it? So you do understand. Lily and my mother both died senseless, violent deaths. The men responsible were cowards. Wasn't one of them your father? Yes, but at least he realized his mistake and did the honorable thing. All these other men, they went on as if it were nothing. As though violating the trust and sanctity of their so-called loved ones didn't matter. It sickened them. They needed to be taught the error of their ways. You said there was still so much to be done. How long are you planning on continuing this? As long as it takes to scrub the city of its filth. And then what? You'll just go back to your ordinary life? My life will never be ordinary again. Once I'm done here, I can always go somewhere else. There's plenty of work to be done in this world. Wonderful. A vigilante lunatic. Just what the world needs. I can't let you continue this madness. The killing needs to end. Surely you, of all people, can appreciate the need for justice. There are other ways of upholding justice, Collins. Ways that don't involve mass murder. The system is broken. Criminals get away all the time, you know that. Only too well. I admit I came here to kill you. It was against everything I believe in, but it seemed necessary. But you comprehend my situation. You understand my reasons for doing what I do. Understanding is not the same as approval. But it is the first step. Is this bastard really suggesting what I think he is? All I ask is that you allow me to continue my work in peace. You looked the other way once before. You can do it again. You're right. I did look the other way. And it wound up costing my partner his life. You're out of your mind if you think I'm going to just let you keep killing. Damn right, Miles. This has to end. Then you leave me no choice. Fordham! Are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. What about you? Did he hurt you? Just a bump on the head, but I'll live. So this is... was... the Justice Killer? That's right. I'm sure Snelling will be pleased to know you put him out of commission. I don't give a rotten fig if he does or not. I'm not going back to work for him. No? Then what will you do? Later, Miles. We'll figure something out. You stay here with Mr. Justice. I'll go and summon the police. Quite a night, eh, Bill? Bill? Are you there? Bill? Ugh. <sighs> Thank you.
Need some company? I'd like to be alone for just a moment, but thank you. So, it's finally over. I have to admit, it's been strange not hearing you all the time anymore. Never in a million years did I think I would actually miss it. But the important thing is you've moved on, and I... I got what I was looking for. I'm starting up my own private detective agency, you know. Upton's gonna be my new partner. It should be interesting, to say the least. Oh, that reminds me. I brought you a little something. It's not much, but I thought you might appreciate it. Thank you for all your help, Bill. I truly would have been lost without it. Bill, wake up! Your grave is on fire! Well, I thought it was funny. Goodbye, old friend. I love you. Samuel Collins? Yes? I'm Terrence Shackley from the Labor Department. I wanted to ask you some questions about your employer at the docks. Oh, uh, <clears throat> of course. Please come in. I'm sorry, what did you say your name was? Terrence Shackley? But it's not my real name. I just used it to get into your apartment. I believe you did something similar at the Houses of Parliament with Mr. McDonough. So, you're Fordham. The one who is snooping around at the Gilded Lily. Indeed. We meet again, Mr. Collins. Of course. The rooftop. I'm sorry about what happened to your partner. It wasn't my intent for him to die. Oh, he's sorry, is he? Is that supposed to make things better? I suppose this encounter was inevitable. But I admit I didn't think it would be this soon. So, you're here to arrest me. That's right. Samuel Collins, I'm placing you under arrest for the murders of Percival McDonough, Burley Cause, Ennis Bowditch, Hannibal Kirkland, and Reggie Willingham. I told you once already, Mr. Fordham, I'm not going to jail. Every one of those men deserve what they got. Why do you say that? None of those men killed anyone. No. What they did was far worse. Inexcusable. Unforgivable. I had to make sure justice was done. I understand your reasons, but that doesn't mean your actions were justified. You need to pay for your crimes, one way or another. My crimes? What about theirs? If not for me, they would have gotten away with them. There are other ways of upholding justice, Collins. Ways that don't involve mass murder. The system is broken. Criminals get away all the time, you know that. Only too well. But you comprehend my situation. You understand my reasons for doing what I do. Understanding is not the same as approval. But it is the first step. Is this bastard really suggesting what I think he is? All I ask is that you allow me to continue my work in peace. You looked the other way once before. You can do it again. You're right. I did look the other way, and it wound up costing my partner his life. You're out of your mind if you think I'm going to just let you keep killing. Damn right, Miles. This has to end. Then you leave me no choice. Fordham, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. So, this is our justice killer? That's right. I suppose congratulations are in order. You did well in finding him. Thank you, Chief Snelling. I'm glad we were finally able to work together. Yes. Well, I'm glad you weren't so brash as to confront him without notifying me first. Perhaps there is hope for you yet. Now then, I'll go get the other officers so we can lock down the scene and remove the body. Wait here. Quite a night, eh, Bill? Bill? 
Are you there? Bill? Oh. It's good of you to do this, Miles. Do you need some time alone? If you wouldn't mind. All right. I'll wait for you over by the sycamores. So, it's finally over. I have to admit, it's been strange not hearing you all the time anymore. Never in a million years did I think I would actually miss it. But the important thing is you've moved on, and I... I got what I was looking for. I'm starting up my own private detective agency, you know. Addie and Upton are going to be my partners. It should be interesting, to say the least. Oh, that reminds me. I brought you a little something. It's not much, but I thought you might appreciate it. Thank you for all your help, Bill. I truly would have been lost without it. Rest in peace, Bill. I love you. <laughs>